I'm here with Steve Israel, Congressman Steve Israel, who's the chairman of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. Congressman, I want to start with, with Congressman Ryan's point. You've got a number of races across the country. Every candidate's going to be asked the are you better off question. There's been a little difficulty. It's a tough question to answer in this economy. What do you tell all of your competitive House members that they should say to that question? Well, I don't have to tell them anything. They know what to say, and it's this. Who's fought to make it better, and who's fought to make it worse? They elected a Tea Party Congress in 2010 that had the opportunity to work with the president to make things better. Instead of passing tax incentives for small businesses to keep jobs in America, these two party Republicans voted to protect big tax cuts for corporations to send jobs overseas. Instead of opening up small business, they chose to spend 32 months shutting down Planned Parenthood. Instead of protecting Medicare, they have a Ryan budget, the architect, Paul Ryan, that ends Medicare as we know it in order to fund tax cuts for millionaires. So on the question of who's fought for the middle class to make things better, and who's fought for the rich to make it better for the rich, the American people know the answer. Before Paul Ryan was even on the, the Republican ticket, a lot of Democrats were running against Paul Ryan, particularly House Democrats. How much has his joining the ticket changed the landscape for House Democrats? It has dramatically changed the landscape. John, when we left Washington in early August, we left in a fairly neutral environment. The generics were very tight. We were up by one or two in the generics. It was a really neutral environment. Uh, I'm a football fan, and I know when you have the ball on your opponent's 20-yard line, your scoring the goal is going to depend very much on the wind. You get a wind at your back, you, you could score. You get a wind against you, you're not going to score. You have a still environment, it's uncertain. We had a still environment. Since then, in August, the architect of the end of Medicare is chosen as Mitt Romney's vice presidential candidate. Todd Akin makes those outrageous uh, statements. And then you have the frolicking in uh, the Sea of Galilee by this Republican congressional delegation. What's happened since then? The generics have opened up for us. So we have a three to five, six percent, a six point lead in the generics. We left Washington with about 50 seats in play. We now have 75 in play and counting. So, so safe Republicans. Certain Republican districts uh, that we thought would be competitive are now absolutely competitive. What about, do you talk about the headwinds or that now you see the wind at your back? There were some headwinds, though. You've got some North Carolina congressmen who are running, some of whom are a stone's throw from here, who are not in the House. There are some difficulties with being associated with this president. What about those headwinds no. they face? Uh, look, there's no question. We've got 19 uh, Democratic incumbents who have more challenging environments than others. But the Republicans have 66 Republican incumbents who now have very soft terrain and are running against the wind and running against their own records. So our incumbents, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, they've got some tough races, but I'd rather be us than them. They have to defend the indefensible. Voting to end Medicare in order to fund tax cuts for millionaires. Our incumbents voted to protect uh, Medicare. All right, Congressman Steve Israel, thanks so much.